Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and as soon as I released my video on hurricane structure and function, uh, two tropical systems seem to have decided to head on over this way to the northern Gulf Coast. So as you could probably expect, the memes on Facebook, or as I like to call it, Boomer Instagram, blew up about the Fujiwara effect. So in today's short phenomenon explained addendum, appendix, sequel, I don't know, I'm going to explain what the Fujiwara effect is and how it affects the motion of hurricanes, and in particular these two storms threatening the northern Gulf Coast in August of 2020. The Fujiwara effect was first explained by Japanese meteorologist Sakiyu Fujiwara, who in the early 1920s pointed out that when objects spin, they tend to form a symmetry of motion due to the forces interacting on them. You know, like how a potter is able to make a symmetrical design of applying a steady force to a lump of clay as it spins. This applies to all low pressure systems. We can call them vortices, like eddies and whirlpools in water, but you are most likely to hear about this effect when discussing tropical cyclones and hurricanes. So the effect occurs when two tropical cyclones, you know, tropical systems are less than 870 miles or about 1400 kilometers apart. What tends to happen is the forces that govern their motion begin to interact with each other and it causes them to be attracted or move closer to each other. And when they're about 400 miles or 650 kilometers apart, they start rotating along a common axis, uh, continuing to grow closer. So if this continues about 200 miles or 325 kilometers apart, one storm actually begins to absorb another and give enough time it forms a single larger low pressure system. So this effect is actually way more common than you would think with storms, but in order for it to be really noticeable, you need to not have a lot of other factors influencing the motions of the storms with things like troughs, high pressure ridges, etc. Because like the forces of gravity and magnetism, the attractive force in the Fujiwara effect reduces drastically with distance. Uh, so those other factors I mentioned can easily overcome the Fujiwara effect when the storms are really far apart. So this also means that the most visible examples of the effect are seen actually out in the open ocean, like in the North Atlantic or in my research you see more examples in the Western Pacific. Also, I know I mentioned one storm absorbing another one. That's like really rare since what you would need for that to happen is systems with really huge differences in strength for this occur. What happens most often is one storm weakens through the interactions and the other one strengthens a little bit as the result. So what does this mean for the 2020 hurricane season? Well, as I'm recording this, the paths of tropical storms Laura and Marco are both looking to make landfall somewhere along the north northern Gulf Coast. And this is something that this YouTube channel's official favorite meteorologist describes as. So this is a first for Louisiana. As long as the National Hurricane Center has been drawing cones, we've never had two cones at one time impacting southern Louisiana. So I know people online are wondering about the chance of these two storms merging to form some sort of super hurricane, but that's not going to happen. They simply don't have enough time to interact with each other before much larger and more important factors to the structure of the storms will impact them. So while the Fujiwara effect does get stronger with proximity between the two storms, the interaction with land that Tropical Storm Marco will experience when it makes landfall first will actually impact Marco's structure and strength way more than its proximity to Tropical Storm or even possibly if it gets strong enough as Hurricane Laura. As far as Laura is concerned, we'll probably see more of the Fujiwara effect at work because while Marco is making landfall and interacting with land, Laura will still be over the Gulf of Mexico as it moves. So we've seen this with the development of the forecast tracks throughout the day of August 21st, and we've seen how drastically Laura's projected motion has shifted to the west. So given how they interact, you could even see Laura actually attempt to follow Marco in some sort of slipstream, since Marco will have already carved a path through the atmosphere as it made landfall, and that'll make it easier for Laura to actually follow right along. So there you go, the Fujiwara effect. It's this really interesting phenomenon when low pressure areas get close to each other. So tropical cyclones, hurricanes, another word for them, are low pressure systems and they exhibit this effect when they get close to each other. Uh, though large scale weather systems usually mask this whenever we look at it unless we're a meteorologist specializing and know what we're looking for. However, if they do get close enough to each other, we can actually see it in action, which looks like we probably will over the next several days. So if you're interested in learning more about how hurricanes form and their structure, and what governs their motion, I've got two videos that explain more than you'd ever want to know. And I'll link those two videos at the end of this one. So how do you think Laura and Marco will interact with
with each other, uh, you know, before the storm makes landfall and this video is released. And if you watch this video afterward, uh, so how correct was my prediction? Uh, why don't you go ahead and let me know in the comments below? And thanks for watching.